Alan Heath has a series of well-known popular mixers called the D-Live series, and they are very flexible to work with. And such a solution also typically consists of a stage rack, which takes care of all the processing, and then you can control it over network via the D-Live software and touchscreens. Or you could use the waveboard with actual tactile faders, buttons, and knobs, and you can have your eyes free to watch the stage. Waveboard is surely not the only panel that exists that can control the D-Live series, but it has some unique advantages. And probably it is the only one, uh, the only fader board that is so flexible in how you can assign control per channel, even across devices and brands. And for that, Waveboard is very, very hard to beat. The Waveboard itself consists of eight channels in this setup, a crisp display, for labels and VU metering, in this case, strength um, measuring. And it also has three buttons with two-way functionality and an encoder knob with a display on top. And we should take a closer look at that right now and how that controls the DLive software from Alan Heath. It looks like this one. So the DLive creator or director allows us, uh, it allows different things, but in this context, it works as a simulation tool. So first thing we want to do is to just check if the faders are actually like adjusting audio. And that's what we can easily imagine when you're seeing this uh, control in here. So it works both ways. If we control it here or on a console, then of course the fader is also moving on the waveboard. We also have a, a mute button here, so we can mute all the channels as much as we want. And we can also change to a new page. So we have access to additional input sources. So you can see we have uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12 is um, organized by these faders. You see how the channel numbers are in the displays on the top. If I go back to the first page, you see the same is true here, all the way up to channel number eight. And then on the last channel, 15, well, 13, 14, 15, if I go to B, the B bank here, then I have those as well, all right? The last one, that's a master fader. So we need to click here to see that actually working, and we also can mute that one. So that's the master, let's just pull it in the software. Yes, it works both ways. And then we have a final page here with um, our DCAs on, and we'll not get in, you know, closer look of those. But I wanna uh, underline that the control we can do here is fairly simple. We're not trying to do everything the software can do, and um, but what we are giving you, that essential control for the tactile fader feedback that you can um, uh, appreciate over a touchscreen or piece of software, this is why we built hardware panels like these, right? That is for you, again, to keep your eyes free to watch the stage or screen or whatever your context is, if it's live production or if it's in a broadcast master control room. So I, um, I want to introduce you to the software inside of the WaveBot. And let me underline, the WaveBot is self-contained. It has this web UI you see right here. And uh, this is the uh, IP address of the WaveBot on the network. So everything it needs to talk to the Allen Heath D Live system is in this box. It doesn't need my computer, except from, for the setup I'm doing right now. We add a device. We can add multiple devices. You give it an IP address. If we look inside, you see it's kind of simple. It's just IP. It is. It has something with MIDI channels, some configuration in addition. And then we have essentially one model right now, which is DLive, and that covers all the different models that they have. So uh, don't worry. Um, the whole series is essentially uh, supported in this way. If we want to see what parameters can be controlled, if you click that icon, then uh, on a general sense, you can study the different parameters inside the um, the unit that we can actually control. There are some information you can probably derive from this, but in the context we are here, we are not trying to be fancy. We are trying to show you what will work out of the box. And out of the box, you just need to add the device and then you need to pick the generic audio control. It's probably done already for you when you make a new project with your waveboard. There are other options in here. Some of those will allow you to actually connect together multiple waveboards. So you can have eight channels, 12 channels, 16, 20, by adding more waveboards together in, in like one long row here. So there are many, many options. And um, I also promised you that it would be easy to connect to other audio devices. And if we look inside the channel edits, I think this will be 
evident to you because for each channel represented by a line in this editor, the configuration that I choose is essentially deciding what that channel does. And that configuration could be directed to something else like a Yamaha mixer or an ATEM switcher. That's an odd uh, video device if you didn't know. We have vMix as well, Behringer, Project DMP from Direct Out. And in each of these cases, Biamp, in each of these cases, there are like different things inside we can control. You see, DLive has the DCAs, the input channels, and the mains. That's how simple our life is in this video. And for the first bank, that's like the first eight lines, we have input channels one through eight. And then if we move on here, we can see for the next, we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then on the 16th position, we have put in the live mains. And that's what we have right here. That, that was the, the main control. I have an idea. This is why I'm underlining it. And then on the last page, we have the DCAs. There are things you can do, like you can actually color code stuff. So that's kind of neat. Notice the colors, which is currently white. I can turn it purple on, on the channel that I choose. You see now there's like purple color inside the fader and also on the button down here. So that's nice, but it's just a little fancy detail. Well, nah, it is actually, it could be critical and useful to you. I'll let you decide. But the thing that I wanted to do was to sacrifice one of my input channels for having the master fader on every page of this configuration between these two pages. So in other words, when I'm on this page, I want the master fader right there, and then I want channel eight to start here. So what I will basically do is to say channel 15, I don't need you, I will change this configuration into one that's live, D live mains, and then I will basically pick mains one. So we have now, and let's just check, because now we basically have two that follow along. They are, yeah, synchronous, right? Same stuff on there. But my point is that I want to take one of these and just move it up here. So notice what happens right now. Everything like shifts over. And now the last fader is my master every single time. Let's go over to the DLive software so we can see it for ourselves. We are looking at page number one. Look at the fader up here. Maybe if I select that one. You see on these pages, ah, I'll just quickly go back here, pick this one, yes. All right, so, and then the point is that this is my master fader regardless of which bank I'm in, right? And then all these faders are for the input channels. You see it up here. And then when I get to the second bank, yes, I have input faders going on from there. Okay, so that little mission was so easy to accomplish using the reactor software as we just did. So I definitely wanted you to see how easy that would be uh, because it's it's really uh, wonderful and simple configuration you can do inside reactor. There's a reason why we have added many more parameters as well to devices and that is you can go crazy and nuts and do the most you know freakingly advanced things in our system by visiting the configuration tab. Now in most cases there are basic uh, you know limited things you can do if you enter in here the default would be that you could add like new pages so we can make like a page 2 and then we have the the buttons over here we can essentially put other functionality onto those. We have accepted the fader sections because that would be too advanced in this particular case. But it's actually possible to go into what we call the tree and do something really crazy in there, but I can't go there today because then I would have to assign more chilies to this video because that is just deep diving into the engine room of Reactor. But it's amazing and we are super proud having done it. At this point, I just want to thank you for following along in this video, and uh, I hope this will be useful to you and inspire you to consider the wave board for all the cases where you need to just break out those controls that are essential to you and your users. So uh, please uh, like and subscribe to this video, follow us on social media, and I can't wait to see you in a different video or at a trade show in the future. But thanks for watching.